He's going to take it himself for a championship. Oh. Another oh. player wins it for three. Turn it to the end zone. What a catch. The Kites on touchdown. He's going to take it himself for a championship. Oh. A double play wins it for three. Turn it to the end zone. What a catch. The Kites on touchdown. It's the Wednesday night showcase game of the evening. 
here on the D1 Media Pro page on the National Federation of High School Sports. It's a cold, wet, rainy evening outside here in Roselle, New Jersey, but things are heating up inside the Lions Den as we have a big one here between the Don Bosco Prep Ironmen and the Roselle Catholic Lions. Good evening, everybody, and welcome here inside Roselle Catholic High School. I'm Kevin Connolly, joined alongside Michael Cerrotti. And Mike, some are saying this is the biggest game of the regular season here in this 2022-2023 New Jersey High School basketball campaign. No matter what rankings you look at, Roselle Catholic and Don Bosco are both in the top three. And this game is set to be one of the best of the year, if not the best. Don Bosco, Roselle Catholic, and really it's the number one non-public ranking that's on the line tonight. Absolutely. In the NJ.com rankings, Roselle Catholic still at number one. Don Bosco at number three. But tonight's outcome could have some movement in next week's rankings. Mike, let's talk about these two teams. These two teams, believe it or not, do not meet often. Last time they met was in the Tournament of Champions final back in 2018. Roselle Catholic coming away with a victory. But before that, these two teams haven't met since 2011. Yeah, and really it's the, it's the tale of the Harper brothers. Right, the last time they played, as you said, 2018, the Tournament of Champions final. It was a 61-54 win for Roselle Catholic. 33 points for Ron Harper Jr., who obviously went on to be a star at Rutgers. And the star tonight for Don Bosco will be Dylan Harper, the younger brother of Ron Jr. Yeah, let's talk about Dylan Harper there for a little bit, a junior guard for this Don Bosco team, but has been in and out of the lineup in recent weeks for the Ironmen. He will play here tonight. Last night, he scored 24 points against the Paul, but Mike, he has not played in four of the last six games for Don Bosco nursing wrist and back injuries. Yeah, he's got a small brace on his right wrist. He is a lefty. But Dylan Harper, when he is playing, just one of the best players there is. He was, in the latest rankings, ranked number two in the country in the class of 2024, and for good reason. He's averaging more than 26 points per game when he does hit the court. Yeah, he also played on Saturday against St. Augustine in his first game since January 12th when he scored 25 points in a rivalry game against Bergen Catholic. He poured 26 points in against St. Augustine. It's a Don Bosco team, Mike, 17-1 and one on the year. Their only loss came in a neutral site game a couple of weeks ago against Camden, and that was the game Don Bosco led at halftime. Yeah, Don Bosco really controlled that game, and one of the big reasons was they controlled the pace of the game. They played how they wanted to, but Camden, a really good team, and they were able to kind of find their groove in the second half and eventually take down Don Bosco, but the Ironmen really held their own against the great team in Camden. Since that loss against Camden, it's been an eight-game winning streak for Don Bosco, four of those games coming without Dylan Harper. Mike, also something to harp on, no pun intended, here for Don Bosco. This is their sixth game in eight days. They've had a lot of minutes on the floor recently. Yeah, it's a lot of activity going on on the hardwood for Don Bosco. They played last night. Roselle Catholic hasn't played in three days, so we'll see what kind of implications that has in this big game. And speak about Roselle Catholic, let's flip to that Lions side. And Mike, a bit of a revenge game, a bit of a rivalry game, because a couple of years ago, two stars from Don Bosco, Akil and Tariq Watson, came over here to Roselle Catholic, and now they'll play their former team for the first time. Yeah, the Watson brothers are really effective on both sides of the ball. They have completely different styles of play. Tariq Watson, more of a back-to-the-basket big. He's way more physical than Akil is. Akil can stretch the floor, shoot the ball, and get around defenders. But the Watson brothers, since making the move from Bosco to Roselle Catholic, they have really stepped up their game and been a, been a key piece for the Lions. Akil, a senior, already committed and signed to go to Arizona State next year and play for legendary New Jersey guard Bobby Hurley. As for Tariq, uncommitted, still a junior, and rising up the recruiting ranking. Some list him as a three-star, others list him as a four-star, but he still has one more year left at Roselle Catholic. Yeah, Tariq Watson, as I said, back to the basket big. He's a big part of both sides of the ball for RC. We'll step aside for our first break. Don't go anywhere. In about 15 minutes, we'll have tip-off between Don Bosco Prep and Roselle Catholic right here on D1 Media Pro.
Special thanks to our sponsor here for tonight's game, Pro Se Apparel. Visit Pro Se Apparel for all your boxing needs. Welcome back here inside the Lions Den, counting down the tip-off between Don Bosco Prep and Roselle Catholic Kevin Connolly, Michael Cerrotti. If you're just joining us here on the D1 Media Pro page here on the National Federation of High School Sports, Mike, one, two players we didn't touch on for Roselle Catholic, two of their senior stars, Mackenzie Ambaco, committed to Duke, and congratulations are in order for him. Yesterday he was named to the McDonald's All-American game, his first year here at Roselle Catholic after transferring in after three years at Gill St. Bernard's, and also Simeon Wiltshire, a senior guard committed to North Carolina. Yeah, the two of them, they just put on a show, night in, night out for Roselle Catholic, and... Kevin, you talk about Mackenzie Mbako. He has just been putting on a show every day for Roselle Catholic. Every time he hits the court, he recently had 27 points against St. Rose, a top 10 ranked team in the state. He just does everything offensively for the Lions. He had 34 points also a couple of weeks ago against Montclair Immaculate. However, Mike... Look at Simeon Wiltshire right there. He's playing with a bit of a chip on his shoulder tonight. He was one of the biggest snubs from that McDonald's All-American game roster that was unveiled yesterday. Yeah, Wiltshire, the five-star recruit, signed to play at North Carolina under Hubert Davis. Really a snub for the McDonald's All-American game. A lot of people thought he would make that final cut. Rosters came out yesterday. He was not on the list, so... He might be playing with a little anger and a little more passion tonight. Yeah, we talked to him before the game, and you could sense that there was still some pent-up frustration inside of him that felt like he was going to unleash here tonight. But certainly Wiltshire and Mbako, two names to keep an eye on for Roselle Catholic here this evening. This should be an outstanding game, perhaps an instant classic brewing here inside the Lions Den. Mike, how many nights have we been in this gym and just witnessed great game after great game over the course of the years? This should be no different. It's Don Bosco Prep, it's Roselle Catholic, it's the top ranking in non-public schools in New Jersey on the line. We'll be back with keys to the game and starting lineups right after this here on D1 Media Pro. About seven minutes away from tip-off here between Don Bosco Prep and Roselle Catholic. Inside the Lions then from Roselle Catholic High School in Roselle, New Jersey. It's our Wednesday night showcase game of the week right here on the D1 Media Pro page on the National Federation of High School Sports. I'm Kevin Connolly. Michael Cerrotti joins me here on D1 Media Pro. And Mike, while we have a minute, let's take a look at your keys to victory for both teams here today. Starting with the visiting Don Bosco Ironman, you got to get Dylan Harper going early and often. He's obviously the best player on the floor for Don Bosco. He's been doing it all year. Kevin, like you said, he's missed some of the last games for the Ironman. He's wearing a wrist brace on his offhand. So, but either way, you got to get Dylan Harper going because he just brings a spark to this offense. The other key for the Ironman, control the pace. Roselle Catholic will try to get out and run, but the Ironman... They're going to have to slow it down, use their set offense to really find success. And for the Lions, you got to limit turnovers. Sometimes what happens for Roselle Catholic, with as much firepower as they have offensively, they run a little too fast for themselves. They take shots and moves that might not be there, and they force it sometimes. So you got to cut down on those turnovers, and you got to use the size advantage. Three of the starters for Roselle Catholic are six foot eight. Really the only size that Don Bosco has is Noah Barnett. So Roselle Catholic will have to use that to their advantage today. Well, we can't wait for this one. And Mike, talk, I was talking with Simeon Wiltshire on Saturday after Roselle Catholic 
defeated St. Rose. And he told me that this is a week that Roselle Catholic has been looking forward to. They have a massive week tonight against Don Bosco. They're back in action on Friday night in the Tom Sachs Memorial Classic against Bergen Catholic, which is right here inside the Lions Den. And then Sunday, they go on the road to play Lujai. And this is a Roselle Catholic team that is starting to hear the outside noise. They have not beaten a team that's located outside of New Jersey so far this year. They're 8-0 against New Jersey teams, 0-4 against out-of-state teams, and they're looking to make a statement here this week. Yeah, Roselle Catholic has all the pieces they could possibly need to be the number one team in the country like they were ranked in the preseason, and they dropped after losing those first couple games in the Bahamas. But like you said, Kevin, they were playing against nationally ranked teams every day. They're undefeated against in-state competition, and they want to do that again tonight against Bosco. Yeah, the four losses for Roselle Catholic, three of them in their first three games of the year. How often do you say that, that a Roselle Catholic team was 0-3? As you mentioned, in the Bahamas, they lost to Duncanville out of Texas and Sunrise Christian out of Kansas. Then they went up to the Gauchos Gym in the Bronx and lost to Gonzaga out of Washington, D.C., and then that was followed up by a loss to Paul VI from Virginia in the Hoopal Classic. Roselle Catholic has since rattled off three victories in a row, and Mike, they have beaten impressive teams here in New Jersey, like the Patrick School and Manasquan, Montclair Immaculate, and St. Rose. And, I mean, those are impressive wins, but none stack up like tonight. Don Bosco, if they can win this game, it would really prove to a lot of people that RC deserves that number one non-public ranking in New Jersey. And speaking about out-of-state wins for Don Bosco, we highlighted their one loss, which came against Camden at Canyon University a couple of weeks ago. But they're 4-0 against teams outside of New Jersey. Picked up a victory over Monsignor Farrell out of New York, and then they were champions down at the John Wall Invitational in North Carolina, most notably picking up a win against Centennial High School out of California, led and, by fellow Duke commit Jared McCain. And Kevin, you talk about that John Wall Holiday Invitational. That's when Dylan Harper really started to prove himself. He was just doing everything for Don Bosco, and a lot of heads were turning to the name Dylan Harper. Our producer, Mustafa Hooten, was down there at the John Wall Invitational for those games, and he came back up to New Jersey, and ever since, he's been calling Dylan Harper the doctor because how surgical he was down there for the Ironmen. We'll see if Harper has the same success here tonight on the road against Roselle Catholic. Starting lineups when we come back right after this here on D1 Media Pro. Welcome back here inside the Lions Den. Don Bosco prep against Roselle Catholic. Kevin Connolly, Michael Cerrotti with you live here on D1 Media Pro. Mike, let's take an early look at the starting lineups tonight for both teams. First, for the visiting Ironmen of Don Bosco, it'll be Isaiah Brown, Noah Barnett, Dylan Harper, Evan Cabral, and the sharpshooter Brady Lachlan rounding out the starting five for head coach Kevin DiVierio. And, you know, Kevin, we've talked about Dylan Harper enough. Let's get some talk about the other guys. Isaiah Brown is the other guard for the Ironmen. He can facilitate the offense really well. And as I said earlier, controlling the pace is going to be important tonight for Don Bosco. That's exactly what Isaiah Brown does. He gets the ball in the backcourt. He will not rush it. He'll take his time getting up the floor and setting up the offense for Don Bosco. As for Roselle Catholic, they'll go back to their regular starting five of Sebastian Robinson, the transfer from Elizabeth High School. Simeon Wilger, Mackenzie Mbako, Akil Watson, and Tariq Watson manning the center position down low. Roselle Catholic bringing back their regular starting five. The last couple of games, they've had Rich Briscoe in place of Tariq Watson. They play very similar styles of play. Back to the basket bigs, but it's a really talented starting five for RC. And Mike, let's talk about two players not included 
in that starting lineup. For Don Bosco, Mark Harasme, a senior guard, really can do it all, defends at a high level, and also has high-making shot capabilities. And for Roselle Catholic, it's the man who does not get any headlines, but he's the junkyard dog of this Lions team. Many call him the best defender in the state, and that's Christian Pierre-Louis. Christian Pierre-Louis is such a special defender. When he defends in the backcourt, good luck getting the ball across midcourt because he is just so pesky. He'll take the ball away from you, and he is with you step for step. Pierre-Louis, number three in white tonight for Roselle Catholic. You see him right there on your screen. We're going to stay live right here for the starting lineup introductions here inside the Lions Den at Roselle Catholic High School. Let's take you live to the floor for starting lineups between Don Bosco Prep and Roselle Catholic. And just hang on one quick second before we get to those starting lineups, Mike. A special achievement was unlocked for one of the Roselle Catholic players on Sunday afternoon in the big victory over Timber Creek. Simeon Wilcher achieved his 1,000th career point for Roselle Catholic, and he's going to be honored pregame here for the Lions. Kevin, the way Simeon Wilcher hit that 1,000th point was just Simeon Wilcher style. He pulled up for three near half court like it was nothing. And he just made it look easy. Again, a five-star ranked senior signed to play next season at the University of North Carolina under Hubert Davis. And Mike Hubert Davis really making his way up here in the Metro North area. Simeon Wiltshire, Elliot Cadeau, Ian Jackson in the class of 2024. So a lot of Jersey products making their way down to Tobacco Road in the next couple of years. So again, now you are looking live at the pregame ceremony here as Simeon Wiltshire is honored for scoring his 1,000th career point on Sunday when Roselle Catholic defeated Timber Creek. And also, celebration for Mackenzie Ambaco. Also achieving his 1,000th career point Obviously his first year here at Roselle Catholic. Spent time at Gill St. Bernard's. His family will join him out on the floor. Brother Ethan, a part of this Roselle Catholic team. Going to be a lot of fun next year watching Mackenzie Mbako and Simeon Wilcher play in the biggest rivalry in college basketball, arguably the biggest rivalry in college sports in Duke and North Carolina. Yeah, they're teammates this year, and they've been making a lot of plays together, throwing up alley-oops to each other, but next year, not so much. Very similar to what we saw a couple of years ago with A.J. Griffin and R.J. Davis out of Archbishop Stepanak in New York, and... Wilcher and Mbanko both said the rivalry between Duke and North Carolina is not going to get in between their friendship as now we will have that thousand point ceremony for Simeon Wilcher. Well, Simeon Wilcher, 1,000 career points here at Roselle Catholic. And Mike looking to make it a lot more here with an emphatic performance tonight. Again, the way Simeon Wilcher hit that thousandth point, confidently pulled up for three near half court. Looked like he took the shot from his home in Plainfield. Wilcher's brother, CJ, currently starring for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. So congratulations to both Simeon Wilcher and Mackenzie Mbako for their personal achievements here in the last couple of games for Roselle Catholic. Mike, now they're going to have to flip the switch from this pregame ceremony to get their game face back on as the top three teams here in New Jersey battle between Roselle Catholic and Don Bosco Prep. We got a good one on our hands, Kevin. Doesn't get much better than this. Roselle Catholic, Don Bosco. 
and both programs led by legendary head coaches Dave Boff for Roselle Catholic, and we mentioned Kevin DeVario for Don Bosco Prep. So now we'll go back live to the floor for the starting lineup introductions here first for the visiting Ironmen of Don Bosco Prep. Crowd still filing in here to the Lions Den, expecting a sold out crowd here between Don Bosco and Roselle Catholic. And now here are your starters for the Ironmen. 17 and one on the year, four and zero oh against out of New Jersey State competition, 13 and one against New Jersey teams. See there, Dylan Harper back in action for the Ironmen, Isaiah Brown, their other guard as well. Noah Barnett, really impressive on Sunday in the 2023 New Jersey Challenge presented by the front office, dominated down low against the Hawks and Brady Laughlin, a sharpshooter for the Ironmen. There once again is the starting five for Don Bosco, Isaiah Brown, Noah Barnett, Dylan Harper, Evan Cabral, and Brady Laughlin as head coach Kevin DeVario leads the Ironmen. Now the starting lineup for the host, Roselle Catholic Lions. Kiel Watson mentioned in our pregame, signed at Arizona State, Mike, three signed Division I players in this senior class for Roselle Catholic. And that could end up being more with this guy right here, Sebastian Robinson, can do everything offensively. And then Mackenzie M. Baco, the final starter for Roselle Catholic. Again, it's Sebastian Robinson, Simeon Wilcher, Mackenzie M. Baco, and then the Watson brothers who transferred a couple of years ago to Roselle Catholic from Don Bosco. And the Lions are led by their head coach, Dave Boff. We'll step aside, tip off in 30 seconds here inside the Lions Den. It's Roselle Catholic and Don Bosco. Back here inside the Lions Den, underway between Roselle Catholic and Don Bosco. The tip is controlled by the Ironmen who wear maroon. Roselle Catholic is in white. Officiating crew, outstanding three-man crew here for today's game. It's Daryl Wright, Brian Murray, and Fred Leo. Sebastian Robinson gets the early assignment on Dylan Harper. Harper into the lane, shot goes up, almost went down. Harper reestablishes inbounds on the baseline and sends it back out as a three-pointer's on the way, and it's too strong as it's tipped out of bounds by Noah Barnett. I expect a lot of defensive changes today from Roselle Catholic, especially with Christian Pierre-Louis. They'll throw him on Brown and Harper. Kill Watson nearly got it stripped there by Brady Laughlin. Wiltshire? Top of the key, just below the free throw line. That's too strong. Tariq Watson, the offensive rebound, got it stripped and stolen away by Isaiah Brown. Now it's Harper down the lane. Cabral in the corner. Three-pointer halfway down and out. Harper, the offensive rebound, and the putback over Mbako. Rutgers head coach. Steve Peichel here in attendance. Harper officially not down to two schools yet, Mike, but it seems like it's a two-horse race between Rutgers and Duke. Yeah, two good options. Obviously, his brother, Ron Harper Jr., a star at Rutgers. Can't go wrong with Duke basketball either. 
as Harper tries a three-pointer, can't get it to go. Sebastian Robinson, the rebound. And Baco from way downtown, too strong. Choppy start offensively for both these teams. Drive into the basket and spin it in off the window is Isaiah Brown. Great take, Isaiah Brown. Not scared of the height disadvantage going up with Mbako. First four points go to Don Bosco here against Roselle Catholic. The answer no good by Sebastian Robinson. Again, first meeting since 2018 in the final round of the Tournament of Champions between these two teams. And then we'll have a travel on the sideline by Brown. I do like the way Don Bosco is controlling the pace. We said it pregame, they have to play the style of basketball they want to. Don't let RC rush you up the floor. And that's what Don Bosco has done. In the backcourt, they're not rushing anything. Just underway here in this first quarter, 5.50 to play. Roselle Catholic still looking for their first basket of the evening. Harper poked that one away as they were trying to send it back out for Wiltshire. Harper on the drive, might have gotten fouled, no call, as Mbako comes away with the loose ball. Now up ahead for Watson, driving on Laughlin, offensive foul. So Akil Watson picks up the early offensive foul, Brady Laughlin steps in to take the charge. Brown with the mismatch with Watson on him. As Barnett tries to post up Robinson, he drives, lot of contact, no whistle. Barnett gets it back and a chance for three at the line. I'm not sure what Mbako was doing there. Completely wrapped up Barnett. I don't know how Noah Barnett got that one to fall. A lot of contact down low. And here comes Pierre-Louis. Well, Christian Pierre-Louis comes in as Noah Barnett has a chance for three at the line. Akil Watson will sit for Roselle Catholic, but it's a 6-0 run to start here for the Ironmen on the road. Don Bosco doing it all early. Mike, we've had a couple of Don Bosco games on our network as Barnett gets the friendly bounce off the back rim, and it's a 7-0 run for Don Bosco here against Roselle Catholic. Mustafa Hootenard, producer, saw Harper down at the John Wall Invitational, but in three games since, have not got a chance to see Dylan Harper for Don Bosco, but finally getting a chance to get our eyes on him here tonight as that ball saved on the baseline, the hustle by Barnett. Brady Lachlan didn't even know Barnett kept the ball in bounds. A great heads-up play from Noah Barnett. Lachlan, one of the best shooters on this Don Bosco team. Another tough drive to the basket for Isaiah Brown, and a timeout called by Dave Boss. It's a 9-0 Ironman run here on the road against Roselle Catholic. 4.37 left to play in the first quarter. We'll take a break and be back right after this here on D1 Media Pro. You know, I'm a person too. How about this start for the Iron Men of Don Bosco Prep? Nine nothing on Roselle Catholic and forcing the Lions to call an early timeout with 4.37 left to go here in the first quarter. Usually Roselle Catholic is on the other end of a start like this, but Don Bosco controlling the game. And it's been Isaiah Brown who's got four points for the Ironmen. Pierre Louis trying to get it down low to Mbako. He's got Harper on him. Mbako drives and got it blocked. Mbako gets it right back, blocked again by Barnett. Now it's Pierre Louis on the spin, the finger roll, no good. Noah Barnett, two blocks in a row, just stepping right in and rejecting the shots from Mbako. Now it's Isaiah Brown with Pierre Louis on him. Robinson still on Harper, who gets the ball on the wing. Tariq Watson switches on to him. Harper driving, a lot of contact, can't get it to go. Robinson 
running. Wiltshire in the corner, trying to get Roselle Catholic on the board, and Simeon Wiltshire's got a three-pointer. Roselle Catholic needed that one. They just needed points on the board. See a number under the Lions name on the scoreboard. Halfway gone with this opening quarter and a six point lead for Don Bosco. Walklin trying to answer with a high arcing three of his own, no good. And Bosco the long rebound. Pierre Louis in the corner trying a three of his own, no good. Pierre Louis not known for his scoring abilities, Mike, more as a defensive stalwart. But Christian Pierre Louis has been getting it done the past couple games offensively. Barnett just below the free throw line, no. Cabral the rebound, put back, no. Got his own miss, devoured by Wiltshire, who keeps it in play. Here goes Wiltshire, and Bako calling for the lob. Wiltshire instead takes it himself, and he gets called for the travel. Roselle Catholic wanted a foul call on that Wiltshire drive as Rich Briscoe will check in for Tariq Watson. Simeon Wiltshire is still arguing his case on the other side of the floor to the officials. Doesn't like that travel call. Dave Boff. Same thing for Roselle Catholic. Lachlan? And he's fouled on a three-pointer by Robinson. So Brady Lachlan going to the line for three shots. Third team foul on Roselle Catholic as Brady Lachlan at the line to shoot three. Lachlan just a sophomore on this Ironman program. Mike, where does Roselle Catholic go from here? Now trailing 12-3, to three, back in a nine-point hole. It hasn't really been working thus far, running the ball up the court. And I like what they're doing here, slowing it down, get a set offensive play. Briscoe at the top, hands back to Wiltshire. Wiltshire on the drive, Robinson in the corner, his three-pointer no good. Rebound tapped around, back into the hands of Robinson. Down low, Pierre-Louis got Barnett in the air, and he's fouled by Lachlan. Well, Christian Pierre-Louis going to the free throw line for Roselle Catholic. First foul on Don Bosco as they actually get the foul on Isaiah Brown, not Brady Laughlin. Christian Pierre-Louis might be around six foot two, but he plays like a seven foot big man. We've really seen Christian Pierre-Louis be the spark plug for this Roselle Catholic team in the past couple of games as he knocks down both free throws. He really changed the game against St. Rose for the Lions on Saturday in their 20-point win. Yeah, and Pierre-Louis was just guarding Dylan Harper in the backcourt. He didn't even have the ball. Lachlan trying to drive on Mbako. Now it's Barnett. Akil Watson will check in for Roselle Catholic at the next whistle with under two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Now it's Harper, Pierre-Louis all over him, and forces the turnover. Robinson up ahead. Now it's Pierre-Louis down low for Briscoe. He gets rejected by Barnett, his third block of the game. RC Bench wanted a foul. Noah Barnett playing the defense tonight. Cabral back out. Lachlan left alone. Can't make Roselle Catholic pay. Yeah, Roselle Catholic lucky to get away with that one without three points under Don Bosco's and name. That ball thrown away. They'll say it was deflected by Don Bosco. It'll stay with Roselle Catholic as Sebastian Robinson comes out for Akil Watson. And we see our first look at Nassim Cosby and Mark Harasme for the Ironmen. It'll be Lachlan and Brown who take a seat. Brady Lachlan was on fire in that game against Camden. He could not miss from three. If they can get him going, Brady Lachlan could add a spark. Wiltshire for three, no. Tapped around, and Mbako on the offensive rebound. Left alone, drives into the lane, and there's the first point of the game for Mackenzie Mbako. Harper jumped to the side a little bit, looked a little timid going up against Mbako in the post. 
And this is a matchup I like. Harper on Pierre-Louis. Five-point Don Bosco lead under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Now it's Harper on Wiltshire. Finds Harasme in the corner. He'll pull it back out. Barnett driving on Briscoe. Got stripped on the way up. Cabral nearly got it back as Mbako secures the loose ball. Nice job by Briscoe standing his ground. Wiltshire trying to feed it to Mbako. Got it poked away. Cabral to Barnett. Cosby in the corner. Passes up on the three. Drives Harasmi. Wide open for three. No good. Roselle looking to run with under 18 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Wiltshire will take the three. No good. Briscoe on the offensive board. And we will get a tie-up. And the arrow keeps it with Roselle Catholic with 10.7 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. As we'll get our first look at freshman Jalen Grant for Roselle Catholic. And also we'll see William Mensa check in for Don Bosco. Love Jalen Grant's game. He is not scared of height. He's probably about 5'10" but he can score with ease. If you're new to the game here in New Jersey, based on the NJSIAA rules and regulations, there is no shot clock here in the Garden State. So if you're joining us here on the NFHS Network, just make sure you make note of that. No shot clock as Akil Watson, three-pointer goes down, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter. That shot almost went down, but it would not have counted anyway. Don Bosco started out on a 9-0 run. They up their lead to 12-3, but it's a 7-0 Roselle Catholic lead to close the first quarter. Ironman 12, Lions 10. We'll be back for the second quarter right after this here on D1 Media Pro. Once again, a special thanks to Pro Se, our sponsor for today's game. It's a 12-10 Don Bosco lead against Roselle Catholic, getting start, set for the start of the second quarter. Kevin Connolly joined alongside Michael Cerrotti. Mike, 9-0 run for Don Bosco to start that first quarter, but Roselle Catholic ends the first frame on a 7-0 run. They got it going from deep, and that really helped out RC. That's a big shot to end the quarter from Akil Watson. Give them some confidence. Harper right off the inbound. Can't get the layup to go. Outlet pass for Jalen Grant, the freshman for Roselle Catholic. He's driving, got it stripped, and then threw it out of bounds. The Lions on the floor are saying it got tipped, but either way goes to the Ironman. Rosme being hounded by Grant on the perimeter. Roselle Catholic wants a five-second count. They don't get it, but they still get a turnover. Now it's Wiltshire driving, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Uh, Roselle Catholic bench is irate as Wiltshire's calling for an offensive foul. Isaiah Brown back in the game for Don Bosco. They tried to get it down low to Harper. Being fronted there by Pierre-Louis. Tipped it to Barnett. Noah Barnett, Brady Laughlin, the leading scorers in that first quarter for Don Bosco. That shot too strong as Wiltshire pulls down the rebound. And he got it picked by Dylan Harper. Harper driving, nice feed. Oh, and Bucko with the rejection. Numbers for Roselle Catholic, five on three, and Baco for the lead. And Roselle Catholic on top on Mackenzie Mbako's defense into offense. Mackenzie Mbako just sent that one back. 
was not scared of the moment as he rose up and rejected it. Now it's Brown driving, can't get the roll. Ball tapped around, saved there by Cabral. And it's Nazim Cosby with the finish. Looked like Pierre-Louis blocked that into the basket. Trying to post up in Baco, gets shown a double. Jalen Grant, the freshman, can't hit the three. Gets his own miss. Back out, Wilcher, straight on three-pointer from Simeon Wilcher, his second of the game. Wilcher's fired up. Told you He's that. talking on the other side of the floor. We told you in our pregame, Simeon Wilcher, one of the snubs from the McDonald's All-American game, playing with a bit of a chip on his shoulder, as that's going to be an offensive foul on Dylan Harper. Mackenzie Mbako steps in to take the charge. Roselle Catholic starting to figure it out. Took them a little while, but they're playing together now. Sebastian Robinson back in for Pierre-Louis. 16-14 lead for Roselle Catholic. It's a 16-5 run for the Lions since Don Bosco started this game on a 9-0 run. And Kevin, we've been talking about Simeon Wilcher not making the McDonald's All-American game. You see his father, Sergio Wilcher, his shirt, it just says unranked. But Simeon Wilcher playing with a chip on his shoulder, knocking down two threes for the Lions. Wilcher open again for three. Can't get that one to fall. Watson got his hand on the rebound, but into the hands of Brady Laughlin. Harper on the drive, and a blocking foul, and they're going to count the basket. Dylan Harper, a chance for three at the line. So Harper to the line for one. Foul goes on, I think they're going to get it on Sebastian Robinson. If they do, that's his second. And Harper can't make the free throw. Wiltshire on the cross, got caught in the air, sends it back out for Watson. 16-16, Roselle Catholic and Don Bosco. Strong move by the freshman, Jalen Grant. Lions back on top. Harper, way downtown, no good. And Baco the rebound. Mackenzie and Baco, so going to go coast to coast off the window, no. And Barnett secures the board. Got to slow it down here, can't go one on three. Brown thought about taking the three, instead a long two in Riles home. Isaiah Brown's got six points for the Ironman. He's their leading scorer. Good decision making there, didn't force up the three. And Banco pass into the corner for Robinson. He drives and got it blocked, but a foul called on Noah Barnett. First foul on Noah Barnett, just a third team foul on Don Bosco as it sends Sebastian Robinson to the line for two. Mike, something interesting for the Roselle Catholic schedule. I mean, Sebastian Robinson, a transfer from Elizabeth. Roselle Catholic not playing any Union County teams on their schedule this year, but still expected to participate in the upcoming Union County tournament next month. And Union County, always good competition for Roselle Catholic, the likes of Linden and Elizabeth. So it'll be interesting to see if they do participate in the county tournament. Linden and Elizabeth play tomorrow night. You can watch a game live right here on D1 Media Pro at 7 p.m. as Dylan Harper will be calling for the reach-in as he fronted Sebastian Robinson. That'll be Harper's second foul. And it looks like Harper is looking to the sideline telling head coach Kevin DeVario, don't take me out, I'm good. Roselle Catholic up by two here against Don Bosco. And now we get a whistle and the clock didn't start. So they will reset it to 4.07. And it'll be a 
Inbounds. We'll see where they bring it. They'll be on the sideline right in front of the Don Bosco bench. Wilcher looking to go on Brown. Fadeaway jumper. Can't get the roll. Harper the rebound. Dylan Harper just below the free throw line. Brown in the corner. Cosby can hit him from there. Can't get that one. As Robinson fights the rebound away from Barnett. Grant in transition. Three-pointer no. Walkland steals the rebound away from Wilcher. Up ahead, Brown. Three-pointer no good. Harper on the offensive glass. Can't get it to go, but he'll shoot free throws. And Mike, right now, seeing how the game of basketball has changed three times up and down the floor, transition three-pointers for each team. And threes are not a bad thing, but when you force them up like they are, and that was an open shot for Isaiah Brown, but I think he could have pulled it back out, waited for the numbers to get down the floor for Don Bosco. But either way, Harper going to the line. Sixth team foul on Roselle Catholic, so Don Bosco in the bonus for the final 3.33 of this first half as Sebastian Robinson will come out. Christian Pierre-Louis back into the game and Rich Briscoe will replace Jalen Grant, the freshman providing some good minutes for the Lions in the second quarter. Harper, two for two from the line. And now with two fouls, he will check out as Evan Cabral comes back in. Harper's half is most likely done. They want to preserve Dylan Harper, as they should with all the talent he has. And Baco gets fouled as he's going up for the shot just below the free throw line. So free throws up coming for Mbako as Harper is going to come back into the game for Don Bosco. Now Mike, these two teams could meet again later this season in the postseason in the non-public final. But still a lot of basketball left to be played until we get to that point. Yeah, a lot of basketball to be played. But these two teams right now, the top two non-publics in the state. Roselle Catholic, a matchup with another Bergen County team as Brady Laughlin hits the three-pointer from straight on. They'll play Bergen Catholic on Friday night, approximately a 7.30 p.m. start right here on D1 Media Pro. It's the Tom Sachs Memorial Classic, and it's a doubleheader here inside the Lions Den at 6 o'clock. It's Patterson Eastside against Gil St. Bernard's as Harper drives to the basket, can't get it to go. Up ahead for Akil Watson all by himself, and he finishes with two hands to tie the score at 23. Nice feed ahead, and Akil Watson with the exclamation point. Barnett on the drive, can't answer, got his own miss, and then got it punched away by Briscoe, and Wilcher saves it in the corner. Wilcher, fade away over Harper, no good, and Baco tipped it to Briscoe. Who gets the friendly roll? Rich Briscoe on the board with his first two points of the night. 2.20 left to play here in this first half. And this game living up to the expectations thus far. Brown driving and he's fouled by Briscoe. Seventh team foul on Don Bosco, but they'll say that's in the act of shooting, so two shots upcoming for Isaiah Brown. Brown with six points here in this first half for the Ironmen. Mike, you look at a player like Isaiah Brown, a lead guard for Don Bosco, playing alongside Dylan Harper. Starting to rack up some Division I offers. Has already been offered by St. Francis, Brooklyn. Out of the Northeastern Conference. Knocks down the first free throw. Isaiah Brown is a great facilitator on offense. He has a great feel for the game, and that really helps him to control the pace, know when to pull the ball back out or shoot. 
Isaiah Brown is just a great point guard that every team would want to have. 25 all as he makes both free throws. Two minutes left to play here in the first half. Don't see this often, Pierre Louis bringing the ball up. And he's going to get called for a carry. Looked like he was caught in between of wanting to pass to Wiltshire and drive to the basket. And he just palmed the ball as now Jalen Grant will come in to replace. Looks like Rich Briscoe will come out for Roselle Catholic. Pierre-Louis off the screen right now is face guarding Dylan Harper. Brown had space, instead kicked into the corner. Three-pointer too strong by Cabral. Wiltshire looking to go one on two, makes a move on Lachlan and is fouled. Roselle Catholic wants a goaltend on the weak side to be called against Dylan Harper. Doesn't look like they'll get the call as Lachlan picks up the foul and Wiltshire's gonna shoot a pair. Sixth team foul on Don Bosco. 137 left to play here in the half, and Wiltshire can't get the first free throw to spin in. Wiltshire one for two from the line. Put Roselle Catholic back up 26 25. Seven points for Simeon Wiltshire here in this first half. Lachlan, bullet pass down low for Harper. Working on Pierre-Louis and a kiss off the window. Ironman back up by one, just over a minute to play before halftime. Wiltshire backing down Brown into the lane, lost the handle, turns, spins, and can't finish. Harper secures the board for Don Bosco with 50 seconds to play. Harper looking to run, going right at him. Bosco curves around him and finishes with the finger roll. Nice move, Dylan Harper avoiding the contact. Didn't want to take the offensive foul and the two points with it. Smart play by Harper, who already had two fouls. Pierre-Louis, too strong on the three. Gets his own miss, and that's going to be a blocking foul and a chance for three at the line from Christian Pierre-Louis. Not afraid of the contact. Pierre-Louis going right at the defense. Don Bosco coaching staff not happy with the call, and I'm not sure I can blame them. I think that's Evan Cabral who will get called for the foul, and he looked to be set from my perspective. It's what it looked like, but with the way this game's going, it's hard to tell. A lot of movement and a lot of energy. These players are always moving, so can't really tell what's going on with some of these foul calls. So Pierre-Louis, a chance to tie this game up at 29 with 29.3 on the clock. Mark Harasmi will come back in for Dylan Harper. That's an interesting switch, Mike. Typically, I mean, Harper does have two fouls, but... Don Bosco prep going to go back on offense. You would think they would right. want Harper out there on the floor. Would have been understandable a lot more if they were going to be on defense, but they don't want to risk that third foul on Harper. Pierre-Louis knocks down the free throw, all tied at 29, with under 30 seconds to go here in the second quarter. With Harper off the floor, we'll see who Don Bosco goes to. Isaiah Brown has eight points for them. Lachlan has six. Ironman will hold for the final shot here this first half. Isaiah Brown, that's a nice feed. Barnett gets the roll. Bosco up by two. Pass to Wiltshire, but he will not get a shot off. And Don Bosco prep with a 31-29 lead against Roselle Catholic after two quarters of play. A good one brewing. Going back and forth. RC and Don Bosco. We'll step aside, be back with some halftime stats and a little bit here as Don Bosco Prep leads Roselle Catholic 31-29 in our Wednesday night showcase right here on the D1 Media Pro page on the National Federation of High School Sports. He's going to take it himself for a championship! Oh. A, a double play wins it for three! Turn it to the end zone. 
just being out there. You know, I'm a person too. This high school gym used to be packed most nights. Not anymore. Do you know why? Because bad behavior by fans, especially adults, has caused a shortage of game officials across the country. You see, without officials, we can't have sports. Don't let this become reality. It's time for a change. Let's bench bad behavior for good. Glover, one-on-one with the basket. Oh, Jaden Glover! With the windmill to send this place into a frenzy. And to the corner, Lawrence. No look pass, and Wilcher lays it in. Wilcher to the hole. Simeon Wilcher starting to heat up. He's got four points, and Roselle Catholic leads by 11. Watson to his brother, and Tariq is fouled and hits it. They'll go to the line for one. They'll pick it up, the clock will move. Lawrence with Adams on him, lost his foot and gets a shot up, and he gets it to go at the buzzer. Jamarcus Lawrence, a big first quarter for the Nebraska commit. Welcome back here inside the Lions Den, getting set for the start of the second half between Don Bosco Prep and Roselle Catholic. I'm Kevin Connolly, joined alongside Michael Cerrotti here on our Wednesday night showcase in Roselle, New Jersey. A 31-29 lead for the Ironmen over at the Lions. And Dylan Harper, Mike, as you would expect, leading the way for the Ironmen. He's got 10 at halftime. And he was doing really almost all of it down low. And that's what Dylan Harper does. He operates really well in tight spaces. He doesn't shy away from contact. He really goes right at it. But there were a couple plays where he avoided the contact, got around it, got to the basket. And Dylan Harper is just playing outstanding for Don Bosco. He did pick up two fouls in that first half alongside with Evan Cabral. As for Roselle Catholic, Simeon Wilcher leading the way with seven points. Mackenzie Ambanco with six. And Christian Pierre-Louis providing an offensive spark with five. And Mike, he's going to start this third quarter for Roselle Catholic. Tariq Watson did not come out of the halftime locker room for Roselle Catholic. So something we will keep an eye on going forward here in the second half. But Christian Pierre-Louis, not a bad backup option, obviously. And he's been playing great defense on Harper and Brown in the first half. So it'll be Robinson, Wiltshire, Pierre-Louis, Akil Watson, and Mackenzie Mbako on the floor to start this second half for Roselle Catholic. Don Bosco still in their halftime huddle with five seconds left on the clock here in halftime. Told you that Dylan Harper had 10. Isaiah Brown had eight. Noah Barnett with that bucket in the final stages of the second quarter has five. Brady Laughlin with six. So it'll be Harper, Brown, Laughlin, Barnett, and Cabral, the starting five back out there for Don Bosco 
to begin this third quarter. Roselle Catholic basketball. Lions trailed by seven at halftime in their road victory against Manasquan earlier this month. But now they're trailing at halftime here on their home floor for the first time this season. They'll go right to Mbako, working on Harper. Pierre-Louis to Robinson, driving. And good body control by Sebastian Robinson to finish over Dylan Harper. Robinson is a pure scorer. Does it from anywhere on the floor. Only had two points at both here with the free throw line in that first half. So his first field goal here tonight. Pierre-Louise on Harper. Akil Watson on Brown. Cabral driving and throws it away. He was trying to find Lachlan in the corner. Don Bosco jumped out to a 9-0 run, extended that run to 12-3 to start the first quarter. Two teams traded leads a couple of times in that second quarter. We're deadlocked at 31 here in the third as Wiltshire lost it on the way up. Pierre-Louis gets it back but then had to throw it away as he fell down to the ground. That's a bullet pass picked off by Pierre-Louis but his momentum carried him out of bounds. Tough it's pass the little thing. Yeah, tough pass there from Brown trying to feed an open Harper in the corner. It's the little things that make Christian Pierre-Louis so good. He didn't keep that one in bounds, but those hustle plays are what define Christian Pierre-Louis. Teams ranked number one and number three in the NJ.com most recent top 20. Roselle Catholic number one, Don Bosco number three, battling right now for regular season non-public supremacy. Two teams have only met twice since 2011 as Pierre-Louis knocks that out of the hands of Harper. Like we talked about in our pregame last time, these two teams met. 2018 Tournament of Champions final. Nas Reed and the Lions getting the upper hand against Ron Harper Jr. and the Ironmen. And it was the other Harper. 33 points in that game for Ron Jr. As Dylan turns around and can't finish. Pinballs off the head of Mbako. And out to Sebastian Robinson. Robinson pulls up straight on three. No good. Three on two for Don Bosco. Brown three. No good. Cabral the rebound. And then he threw it right to his head coach. Brady Lachlan was standing right next to Kevin DeVario. That's the second possession in a row that Cabral and Lachlan have not been able to connect on the pass. And Baco facing up Barnett. He'll take the three. No good. Robinson tips the rebound, but they'll say last touch off of Zay Brown. That inbounds pass from Wiltshire reflected into the second row by Cabral. Thirty-one all. Two minutes into this third quarter, and Baco, nice feed. Watson on the hesitation. Lions back on top by two. Ironman looking for their first points of this second half. driving on Pierre-Louis lost it on the way up Barnett gets it right back and then we'll get a foul called on the floor it'll go on Simeon Wilcher his second Harper to Lachlan looking for space the finger roll no and Baco pulls down the board. There goes Pierre-Louis, finding Akil Watson. Corner three, no good. Ball tapped around, and Robinson controls it on the baseline. Sebastian Robinson 
Missed the layup in close. Now it's Dylan Harper. Barnett will set him a screen, as will Lachlan. Backdoor fine, Cabral passes, Brown a three. No good. Roselle looking to run, and Baco, the Euro into the lane, can't get the roll. Back down low, rejected. It was Wilcher and Mbako on the swat. Robinson looking to run, and he's fouled by Brady Lachlan. Offense tough to come by here in this third quarter for both teams. So Sebastian Robinson back at the line. Lachlan picks up the foul. His second as Robinson misses the first free throw. But Mike, you got to give Don Bosco credit. They've now played Camden and Roselle Catholic and led at halftime in both games. Not shying away from the top teams in New Jersey, and they're holding their own, playing some good basketball in both games. Robinson 0 for 2 from the stripe, and Baco lost it, and Harper controls it for Don Bosco. Harper's been quiet in the second half so far. Don Bosco looking for their first points of this second half. Pierre-Louis the steal on Barnett, and then Barnett's going to get called for a foul back behind the play. Second foul on Noah Barnett. I think head coach Dave Boff for Roselle Catholic arguing he wanted an intentional foul call because Roselle Catholic was running with two on one down the other end. But it'll just be a common foul and Roselle Catholic will have to inbound from the opposite baseline. And Baco worked free, three-pointer, no good. Lachlan fights with Pierre-Louis for the rebound. Just four points total scored in this first four minutes of the third quarter. Dylan Harper tries to change it, but Noah Barnett does with the putback. First Ironman points of this third quarter, and then Wiltshire gets it around Barnett. Lions back up by two. See if that putback slam by Noah Barnett and get Don Bosco going. Harper will try it from three. And the Ironmen back with a one-point lead. Watson down the other way for the answer. These two teams have woken up here in this third quarter after slow starts. And Kevin, it's a migraine that has kept Tariq Watson out of the game since the first quarter. He was out Sunday against Timber Creek with the same thing. Has not started the last couple of games. Did start tonight. Floater by Harper. No good. But a foul called on Roselle Catholic. It's going to go on Christian Pierre-Louis. Dylan Harper clearly getting tired. And it's tough for him when he's being guarded by... Wilcher, Robinson, Pierre-Louis every time he goes down the floor. And also, told you about it in our open, maybe not in game shape, is Dylan Harper. He has been in and out of this Don Bosco lineup over the past couple of weeks. This is the eighth game in six days for the Ironmen. They're on an eight-game winning streak, and four of them have been without Dylan Harper, but he did play yesterday, scored 24 points and a 20-point victory against DePaul. Sebastian Robinson comes out, Rich Briscoe back into the game. Harper's got 14 here against Roselle Catholic. One free throw with three minutes to go in this third quarter. Can put Don Bosco back up on top, and it does. And a timeout is called by the Ironmen. That's their first 30-second timeout. We'll step away as Don Bosco leads Roselle Catholic 38-37. You know, I'm a person too.
Timeout called by Don Bosco Prep, their first of the game. Three minutes left to play here in this third quarter. I'm Kevin Connolly, joined alongside Michael Cerrotti. We thank you for joining us here for our Wednesday night showcase game of the week here on the D1 Media Pro page on the National Federation of High School Sports. Don Bosco, a one-point lead against Roselle Catholic here inside the Lions' den. Kevin, a great game. It's lived up to the hype so far. Still 11 minutes to go between these two great teams. Reminder to stay tuned for tomorrow night, our Union County Thursday night rivalry game of the week features Elizabeth taking on Linden. 7 p.m. start for that one. And also a reminder to stay tuned on Friday night for a doubleheader here inside the Lions Den. It's the Tom Sachs Memorial Classic at 6 p.m. It's Patterson Eastside against Gil St. Bernard's. And then at 7.30, Roselle Catholic takes on Bergen Catholic as Rich Briscoe had that one stripped by Noah Barnett. There's Zay Brown in the corner. His three-pointer goes down. That's a big shot from Isaiah Brown. Wiltshire trying to respond. Back out for Mbako. He'll try his luck from downtown. No good. Briscoe on the offensive rebound, but couldn't get the roll. Harper, outlet pass for Cabral. Cabral jumps it off. Barnett down low. No good. It was Mbako and Briscoe on the rejection. And then Barnett got stripped on the way up. It's out of bounds. It'll stay with the Ironmen, but Don Bosco wanted a foul called. Now, it might not seem like it because it's just a baseline inbound, but this is a big possession here for Don Bosco, already up by four. They'll get it in for Harper, and he's stripped Great from behind defense. by Mbako. There's Akil Watson, and he'll throw it down with two hands. Great defense by Mackenzie Mbako. Read it the whole way and just ripped the ball out from Harper. Keel Watson had five points in that first half. He's got six already here in the third quarter as Roselle Catholic's back within two. Harper from way downtown, no good. Wiltshire looking to run for Roselle Catholic. Wiltshire all the way to the basket, and Bucko there for the putback jam. Perfect timing from Mackenzie Mbako. Wilcher took his time with that move, getting to the basket, and Mbako followed it up perfectly. Tied at 41 with 90 seconds to go in the third quarter. Here's Dylan Harper with Pierre Louis on him. Looking to shake free, driving, hanging, wow. and finishing. Tough finish, Dylan Harper. He could barely even see a basket, let alone put the ball in. Our producer, Mustafa Houghton, Calls him the doctor. And you can see why with moves like that. Down low for Briscoe with the size advantage on Lachlan and the turnaround. Nice move from Briscoe. He felt when the time was right to make that turnaround and put it up. 50 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Again, no shot clock as a part of the NJSIAA rules and regulations. So Don Bosco, in theory, could hold for one shot if they want to. They won't. Lachlan will take the three, and he can't get it to go. And Bosco out to Wiltshire. 30 seconds left to go in the quarter. Wiltshire down low. Watson on the hesitation, the turnaround, and the roll. Akil Watson really showing out here in this third quarter. Puts Roselle Catholic back up by two. 15 seconds left for Don Bosco to work. Here's Isaiah Brown with Wiltshire on him. Brown looking to go straight to the basket. Flips it over to the corner. Cabral to Harper. Harper driving. Tough mid-range. Too strong. It bounces out. And Roselle. Oh, that went in. Will they count it? No, they will not. Be Definitely after it the went buzzer, after the but buzzer. But what, impressive shot. Yeah, what a shot. Mackenzie Mbako stating his argument. That should count. But it will not. No basket as it's 45-43. Roselle Catholic on top of Don Bosco. We're going to the fourth quarter. And you better not go anywhere. Final eight minutes of regulation coming up right after this.
45-43, Roselle Catholic on top of Don Bosco Prep here inside the Lions Den at Roselle Catholic High School. So now we have some confusion here at the scores table. And I think it's on the scoreboard. So our officiating crew of Daryl Wright, Brian Murray, and Fred Leo going over with both teams' official scores on how many points they have. Like, I just tried to count up the point total that I keep in between quarters. I have Don Bosco at 42, but I'll be the first to say mine is extremely unofficial. I, I did Devin, have Roselle... Just call the game. You don't have to make any calls, so... Yeah, I don't, That's what the officials are here for. Yeah, so they'll try and sort that out. I did have 45 for Roselle Catholic, but I had 42 for Don Bosco. On the scoreboard here, it has 45-43. On our scoreboard, we have 45-43, but that's what the officials are going over right now at the scorer's table. And now it looks like they're going to try and do some quick math and add each of the score books up. So while they do that, we'll step aside for another break and be back once they get this thing sorted out right here on D1 Media Pro. So back here at Roselle Catholic, Mike, just trying to overhear and eavesdrop in from the conversation at the scorer's table, which is literally five feet away from us. Heard the number 45 being talked about, so it seems like it might be an issue with how many points Roselle Catholic has as compared to Don Bosco. So that's what they're still tracking at now is try and go with one, ear, one headset ear in and the other one out trying to listen in here. But that still seems to be the issue that they're still trying to sort out at the scorer's table. So again, the score on the scoreboard is 45-43 in favor of Roselle Catholic. Still sorting this out. Not sure what the problem is, but yeah, just they're taking a look at it still. When we Counting up both scorebooks, too, making sure everything matches. Got a chance to talk briefly, talk with some of the Roselle coaches that are right in front of us here from our broadcast perspective when we let, went to that last break and said, well, what's, what's the issue? And they said it is a scoring issue, but they didn't say to what team it was a scoring issue. So they're still so trying to get might, that sorted it out. It may be either 45 or 47 for Roselle Catholic, and now the officials will get together and discuss. Yeah, they just sent both teams to their benches, and now they're going to get together to talk about it. So that's interesting because, again, I keep just a brief tally here on my scorebook. Very, very messy here on my roster just so I can have an idea of how many points a certain player has. And at the end of that third quarter, not knowing that there was an issue with the official score, I counted up and I did have 45 for Roselle Catholic, but me trying to do multiple things here at once, I sometimes miss marking down a basket. So, again, my, my score sheet should be no indication on what the actual score is, so just want to make that clear. But again, our officiating crew of Daryl Wright, White, Brian Murray, and Fred Leo talking about it now at midcourt. And there's, no, there's three people at the scores table that are keeping track 
of the points. You have the Roselle Catholic official score, the Don Bosco official score, and then our public address announcer tonight is also keeping a tally so he knows how many points a player has and how many fouls. Now we'll try and listen in as both head coaches get an explanation from the officials. Not getting a real reaction out of either head coach here, Mike, of what the explanation is. Typically, you'd see a head coach not in favor or a head coach be a little frustrated on what the officials are telling them. And this is tough for the players. They're just sitting on the bench, and there's nothing they can do right now except wait. Yeah, we had a great flow and a great pace to this game, and obviously now that being halted a little bit here with this delay. And still adding up the totals in the scorebook. So now it looks like they're going to keep it at 45-43 in favor of Roselle Catholic. So all that, and they're not going to change the score. Do we know if that was the right decision? No, but at least we're going to get this game back resumed and underway. Officials had that under control. A great job by our crew. They knew what they were doing going to both books. So we don't know if it's the right amount of points for either team, but they definitely did extensive work to make sure it was correct. So it'll be Don Bosco basketball as now we are underway here in this fourth quarter. Brady Laughlin trying to feed Barnett, who was open down low. Instead got it to Cabral, no good. Tip no good, and Mbako secures the defensive rebound. Now with Simeon Wiltshire working on Dylan Harper, two of the best guards in the country. Watson down low, lost it on the way up, and it'll go to Don Bosco. And you don't see Dave Boff like this too often. Yeah, he thought Watson was stripped, and it should be Roselle Catholic ball. This game living up to the hype between Don Bosco and Roselle Catholic. Watson comes away with the steal again by himself, and he's fouled on the way up. Lachlan got him from behind as Watson was looking for his third breakaway dunk of the evening. It was a, <laughs> scared me a little there. It was a delayed foul call, and I think Dave Buff was ready to run onto the floor. That's the entire RC bench jumped up waiting for the foul call. That's and now they want... Sorry to cut you off again, Kevin, but now they want an intentional foul on the clear path. Looked like one of those fouls where it's, if he made it, there would be no foul call, but they're waiting until he missed and then blew the whistle. But how about this second half Akil Watson is having? He's got nine points in this second half alone. Now make it 10. He's up to 15 points tonight. <laughs> Playing against his former team in the Don Bosco Prep Ironmen. Four-point Roselle Catholic lead. Dylan Harper straight on three-pointer, and Dylan Harper's heating up here in this second half. Harper's feeling it. They didn't get it to him for the first few minutes of the half, but now getting back into the groove. And then we're going to get a whistle, and they'll count that bucket for a goaltend on Don Bosco. Noah Barnett went up just a little bit too late. Ball was on its way down. So they'll count the two points. Roselle Catholic back to a three-point lead. Brown with it. Roselle Catholic wanted a walk. Back out for Harper, who's hit two three-pointers here in this second half. Briscoe switches on to him. Harper looking to take him off the dribble, driving, and they'll get a foul call as Dylan Harper is going to go to the line to shoot free throws. Harper obviously has a speed advantage over Rich Briscoe, and he used it there getting to the basket. And now it looks like they're going to call out for a towel to wipe up some perspiration underneath the basket. The foul was on Christian Pierre-Louis, his second, team's third of this second half with 6.26 remaining in the fourth quarter, and 
Kevin, we got to give props. Roselle Catholic trainer Mel Hand out there wiping up the floor. He's all over the place at these RC games. High energy, as always, from Coach Mel. So Harper will be at the line to shoot two. Talked about it a little bit in the first half, Mike. Rutgers head coach, Coach Peichel here watching. Don Bosco here with his son, Kevin Peichel, who's a young guard for Gil St. Bernard, so you'll see live right here on Friday on D1 Media Pro. Yeah, Peichel obviously wants Dylan Harper, and who doesn't with the star power he could bring to a college? Again, he hasn't officially cut his list, but when you, what you read and see from a lot of recruiting experts, it seems like it's a two-horse race between Duke and Rutgers for the services of Dylan Harper as that ball gets poked out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Ironmen, who are within one of Roselle Catholic after those two free throws from Dylan Harper. Talk about Rutgers just landing their first five-star in Ace Bailey as Dylan Harper hits a three to give Don Bosco the lead. Ace Bailey wants Harper to be his teammate at Rutgers, hitting big shots like that. And Bacco cannot answer too strong. Barnett the rebound, Harper was calling for it all alone down the other end of the floor. Brown gets it to him. Harper, a heat check and it was halfway down and bounced out. Now Wilcher. Looking to run, Wilcher right to the basket, high off the window, Briscoe no, the follow and he got stripped and a foul is called and Rich Briscoe is going to the line for Roselle Catholic. Good transition defense from Don Bosco, Simeon Wilcher got out there sprinting to the basket and Mbaco was following, but it was really Dylan Harper that stopped the transition as he cut off Mbaco between him and the basket. Kill Watson on the Roselle Catholic bench lobbying to get back into the game. He's been the hot hand in this second half for the Lions as Briscoe knocks down the first free throw. So Watson, if Briscoe makes this free throw, will check in. And Briscoe gets the roll, so we're knotted at 51. Watson comes in for Briscoe. Fifty-one, fifty-one, with 5.23 to play here in the fourth quarter. What else would you expect between Roselle Catholic and Don Bosco? Brown, good defense by Jalen Grant as Pierre-Louis comes away with the loose ball and a kick ball is called. It'll be on Don Bosco, so Roselle Catholic gets the possession. Sebastian Robinson comes back in for Jalen Grant. And now it looks like Christian Pierre-Louis, is he bleeding from his forehead? I think that's what the thing is, and Darrell White brings him over to the Roselle Catholic bench. He's just saying, just wipe it off. He does not want to go to the bench. Yeah, he's got a cut right above his eyebrow. And now they will get Pierre-Louis a towel, or maybe not. He says he's good. A lot of confusion here early in this fourth quarter. This game tied at 51. Well, that's, all what, right, we saw. All set. That, that's what we saw in the St. Rose game. There was a St. Rose player who was bleeding from his arm, and Roselle Catholic kept getting blood on the jersey, and no one could figure out where the blood was coming from. Wiltshire had to leave for a moment, and Baco had to leave, Pierre-Louis all had to leave because they all had blood on their uniforms, and no one could figure out where this blood was coming from, and finally they found out that a St. Rose player had a cut on his arm, and that's where the blood was coming from on the Roselle Catholic jersey, so similar situation there, but Pierre-Louis says he's good, as Mbaco will get it back in the corner, he'll get doubled, both teams still with four timeouts left. Watson, the kick, Wiltshire calling for it. He'll drive, and he gets met at the summit by Barnett, but Watson's there for the follow. 
I don't like that play from Noah Barnett. It's a great block, but then he starts talking, and Rich Briscoe is there. And a blocking foul will be called on Simeon Wilcher on the opposite baseline. And excuse me, Mbako, not Briscoe, but Noah Barnett looked down at Wilcher after the block instead of staying to defend the follow. That's the third foul on Simeon Wilcher, fourth team foul. There's Barnett driving and throwing it down with two hands and hanging on the rim with a little extra. Roselle Catholic wanted a technical foul. Kevin, he might have heard me talking, making up for his lack of defense with a big jam. 4.15 to go, tied at 53. And Baco bumped by Barnett, and Baco! Oh, he blew the dunk, threw it off the back rim. Ironman looking to run. Brown hangs and finishes. A four-point swing. Mackenzie Mbako thought he had the dunk. Instead, he missed it. And Isaiah Brown finished on the other end. And a timeout is called by Roselle Catholic. Don Bosco, 55. Roselle Catholic, 53. 3.46 to play here in the fourth quarter. Fifty-five, fifty-three. Don Bosco on top of Roselle Catholic with 3.46 to play here in the fourth quarter. Kevin Connolly, Michael Cerrotti with you live here on D1 Media Pro. Mike, this game living up to the hype. Living up to the hype and maybe more. We've gone back and forth all game long. This last 3.46 should be entertaining. It's been the Dylan Harper and Akeel Watson shows in this second half for their respective teams. And Watson was on the bench for a while, but he's back in now. And Dylan Harper is Dylan Harper. He's going to do his thing for the Ironmen. Latest swing in this game, a missed dunk by Mackenzie Mbako. Turns into a layup on the other end for Isaiah Brown as Simeon Wilcher misses a shot in close. Barnett spinning on Mbako, throws it off the window, and we get a late whistle, and it looks like a foul will be called on Mbako. Second foul on Mbako, and it puts Barnett at the line for two. Barnett, two for two from the line. And Don Bosco with a two possession lead. Here with three and a half to go. Harper's on Watson. The handoff to Mbako who gets Harper switched on him. Mbako backing his way into the paint. Finds an open Akil Watson. Three-pointer, no. Mbako the offensive rebound. Oh, he's too strong. He missed the layup, but he's there for the follow. I mean, Mackenzie Mbako just with his body pushed Brady Laughlin out of the way. Tough stream set by Barnett. Brown is fouled by Wilcher. Fourth foul on Simeon Wilcher. 2.47 to play here in the fourth quarter. So Simeon Wilcher, Mike, now has to be careful. He's got four fouls. Sebastian Robinson has three. So Isaiah Brown goes to the line. And it wouldn't surprise me if they keep Simeon Wilcher in for this offensive possession and then at a dead ball maybe take him out 
bring in Jalen Grant or Rich Briscoe. And now it looks like they're gonna need Coach Mel to come back out there to wipe up the floor as Brown missed the first free throw. So Isaiah Brown with one more shot. And as Coach Mel wipes up the floor, a timeout is called by Roselle Catholic. They'll have two remaining. 2.47 left to go in regulation. One more free throw upcoming for Isaiah Brown when we return here on D1 Media Pro. So Roselle Catholic burns a timeout. They have two remaining. Don Bosco with four timeouts left as we have 2.47 left to play here inside the Lions Den on the campus of Roselle Catholic High School. The reigning tournament of champion winners are the Lions returning a lot of their core from last year's team, losing players like a Jamarquez Lawrence, but adding McKenzie and Baco, Mike. But they have struggled a little bit here in this season with four losses already. Yeah, the pieces haven't really clicked together yet for Roselle Catholic, but a great team all around. Isaiah Brown, one for two from the line. Three-point game with under three minutes to play. And Kevin, you speak of Jamarquez Lawrence, he got his first start tonight for Nebraska. And obviously on Nebraska also C.J. Wilcher, the brother of Simeon. Now Simeon fades into that one and gets it to go and brings Roselle Catholic back within one. Wilcher's just second made field goal here in this second half. Brown looking to drive in on Watson and he traveled. They'll get Isaiah Brown with the walk. And the size advantage there of Akil Watson towering over Isaiah Brown might have forced that. Roselle Catholic a chance to go back on top with a made shot. Wilcher, driving, spinning, Simeon, Wilcher gets the roll. Four straight for the future Tar Heel. And the Lions lead by one. Now it's Dylan Harper trying to answer. No, nobody there for the follow as Dylan Harper puts Don Bosco back on top. Now it's Akil Watson driving and Bosco in the corner. Usually Stopped takes by that Cabral. shot. Wilcher feeling it. Wilcher with three. Oh, Simeon Wilcher proving he got snubbed from the McDonald's All-American game. Lions by two, a buck 20 to go, and a timeout called by the Ironmen. Simeon Wilcher with the last seven for Roselle Catholic. And Mike, that's a motivated man right now for the Lions. He has something to prove tonight, and he is proving it. We'll stay live right here with you on D1 Media Pro. But Simeon Wiltshire, the last seven points for Roselle Catholic, and he had the Lions up by two with a minute 18 left to play as Don Bosco calls a timeout. See there, Dave Boff instructing his team. They're going to roll with this five, Mike, you would assume, of Wiltshire, Watson, and Baco, Robinson, and Pierre Louis. You mentioned at the start of this second half, Tariq Watson has not come back out of the halftime locker room continuing to deal with migraines. And you got to feel for Tariq Watson. He couldn't play in their last game on Sunday. He gave it a go tonight. Played, he started, but could not come back out of the locker room with that migraine. Now I'll put you in the shoes of Don Bosco head coach Kevin DeVario. I have a feeling we all know who the basketball is going to here. I'll do it. And just as I zoomed in there, Dylan Harper got the point from Kevin DeVario. 
Now, whether he's getting the ball or not, we don't know, but he has something to do with this play. Roselle Catholic 62, Don Bosco prep 60. A game that's exceeding expectations here in the Lions' den. Harper will inbound for Don Bosco. Lachlan with it, hands right back to Harper. Harper keeps his dribble with Pierre-Louis, throws it up to the basket, no. And it's Simeon Wilcher with the rebound. He got it stripped, oh, what a block! Pierre-Louis saves it in the corner. It comes out to Lachlan. Harper calling for it, Cabral gets it. He drives and he stepped out of bounds. What a block from Christian Pierre-Louis, denying Evan Cabral on the weak side. Best defender in the country? It's not a fact, but Christian Pierre-Louis making people think it today. Under a minute to play. Wiltshire with the last seven for Roselle Catholic with the last nine for the Lions. Crowd on their feet here in the Lions Den. Simeon Wiltshire bringing Roselle Catholic home. Here's Isaiah Brown, Cabral in the corner and air ball. Rebound to Watson. There's Simeon Wilcher by himself, and he lays it in. He's got the last 11 for Roselle Catholic. And a timeout is called, or maybe not. A timeout was, in fact, called by Don Bosco with 29.5 left on the clock. But Simeon Wilcher has got the last 11 points for Roselle Catholic. He is doing everything right now for the Lions. All 11 points for Simeon Wiltshire coming in this fourth quarter. Playing with a chip on his shoulder after being snubbed from the McDonald's All-American game yesterday. Proving everyone wrong and showing why he should have been selected. Game reset, Roselle Catholic 66, Don Bosco prep 60. 16 fouls on the Lions, four on the Ironmen. There's 29.5 seconds left to go here in the fourth quarter. The possession arrow currently sits with Roselle Catholic. Don Bosco will inbound from the baseline. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Lachlan will trigger for the Ironmen. He'll get it into Brown. Don Bosco, see if they go for a three. Instead, Brown drives and it's blocked by Wilcher. Simeon looking to run, and he is fouled out on the perimeter. It'll be the fifth team foul on Don Bosco. It'll go against Dylan Harper, his third. And Mike, Simeon Wilcher doing all this with four personal fouls as well. Yeah, he is not scared right now. Simeon Wilcher going to work. Five team fouls on the Ironmen. So still two more to give before Roselle Catholic's in the bonus. The Lions have the ball with 19.2 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. The Simeon Wilcher show in full effect late in the fourth quarter. You missed any of our game, you could watch the full replay via the on-demand function here on the National Federation High School Sports. You can also watch the game, believe it'll be posted to YouTube by tomorrow afternoon. And you can watch all highlights and post-game interviews on our social media channels. That's D, the number one media pro, like you see on your screen, D1 Media Pro, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And then a foul called. It'll go on Evan Cabral. Four seconds comes off the clock. Third foul on Cabral. 16 foul on Don Bosco, so the next one will put Roselle Catholic at the line for a one and one. Wiltshire inbounds to Pierre Louis. They get it right back to Wiltshire. Drops it off. Akil Watson with the dagger. Akil Watson and Simeon Wiltshire have led the way here in this fourth quarter. Harper's prayer not answered. Watson got it stripped. Lachlan throws it up to the rim. It's no good. The final horn sounds. Roselle Catholic. A comeback 68-60 victory over Don Bosco Prep here in another instant classic inside the Lions' den. Simeon Wiltshire went to work. 
put them in the McDonald's All-American game. 11 straight points for Roselle Catholic, which turned a deficit into a lead. What more can you say for the future North Carolina Tar Heel? And what more can you say about this game? Back and forth from start to finish. Roselle Catholic, Don Bosco lived up to the hype and more. Perhaps these two teams could meet again in the non-public final in early March here in the NJSIAA postseason. Wouldn't that be fun, Kevin? Once again, a reminder, tomorrow we have a Union County clash here on D1 Media Pro as Elizabeth takes on Linden. And then on Friday, we're right back here inside the Lions Den for the Tom Sachs Memorial Classic. It'll be a doubleheader at 6 o'clock. It'll be Patterson Eastside against Gil St. Bernard. And then at 7.30, approximately 7.30, it's Roselle Catholic against Bergen Catholic. Mike, we'll be here for both those games. Really looking forward to an outstanding event always here at Roselle Catholic. Yeah, should be a fun day on Friday. And somewhere in that mix is Simeon Wilcher. Yeah, he's being mobbed as he goes back into the locker room for Roselle Catholic. Once again, if you missed anything here tonight, you can watch the full on-demand replay via the on-demand function here on the National Federation High School Sports. You can also watch this game, which will be uploaded to YouTube uh, by about tomorrow afternoon and you can watch all of our highlights and post-game interviews on our social media channels that's d1 media pro just like you see it on your screen on twitter instagram facebook youtube and tiktok for michael sirotti i'm kevin Connolly. thank you for watching this presentation of new jersey high school basketball right here on the d1 media pro page on the national federation of high school sports the game lived up to the hype a 68 60 comeback victory for Roselle Catholic over Don Bosco Prep. Have a good night, everybody, and we'll see you next time right here on D1 Media Pro. He's going to take it himself for a championship! Oh. Oh. Another one wins it for three! Turn it to the end zone. What a catch, McKay!